Good evening and welcome to our weekly Wednesday night personal growth Chabura, sponsored by Neshe Aguda of Baltimore, as is the minig of Neshe Aguda. We're going to say a Pasuk to Hillen, a Perak to Hillen, and then we're going to say Meshaberach and please insert inside the space, which I leave during the Meshaberach, names of people you're davening for, and in the Schus of our learning together tonight and our saying to Hillam, they should have a Rafu Shlema. Let's say together Kuf Chav Aleph, Kapitel Kuf Chav Aleph 121 in Tehillim, as follows. Shir la malois, esai na yal harim, mi ayin yavo ezri, ezri me'im adonoi, usei shamoim v'aretz, al yitain lamot rag lecho, al yanum shomrecho, Hinei lo yanum lo yishan, shomer Yisrael, Adonai shomrecho, Adonai tzilechal yad yeminechom, Yom ama shemesh lo yakeko, v'yarech v'alai lom, Adonai yishmorcha mikora, yishmor es nafshecho, Adonai yishmor tzisecha v'echo, neata v'yarolam. Mishaberach, Abosino Abram, Yitzchav Yaakov, Moshe, Aaron, David, Bishlomo, Yivarech, Yirape, Esacholim, Babur Shakila, Kedosha, Yispalel, Yispalelu, Be'ad, Rufuwasam, Yitzcharzea, Kodesh Baruch, Yimalerach, Yimalayam, Ulach limam, ulach osam, ulach chazikam, ulach hay osam. Yishlach lahem mehira rufua shlima. Min ha-shamayim l'chol eviriyem, l'chol gidayim. V'chsoch shar chol Yisrael. Rufua sa nefesh, rufua sa guf. Hashta ba'agal wazman kariv. V'nomar amein. This summer I had the schus, the opportunity to be in Eretz Yisrael for six weeks working, learning, and I was able to tour Eretz Yisrael with my tour guide, my friend David Zeleg, a very passionate Ben Torah tour guide. And we went to 36 places, and you can find the videos and the Divrei Torah we said in those places on my YouTube channel, Yisrael Roll YouTube channel, under the playlist called Encounter Israel. And there, the first video you'll find, which I'll post here today on our chat, is we went to the narrow steps leading up to Sha'ar Hebron, the gate of Hebron. It's not a place that most people go to. You, you go usually to the Marasa Machpila, but this is the place where Avram Avinu negotiated with B'nai Chait in order to purchase the Marasa Machpila. They found a 4,000 year old staircase most likely the staircase that was walked upon by Avram Avinu, leading up to a narrow place called Sha'ar Iro, the gate of the city of Hebron. And there he negotiated. And we stood on that place. You can see it on the video. And I'll send it to you now. I'll just post it right now on the chat. There it is on the chat. Take a look at it later and visit this unbelievable place where Avraham Avinu stood and negotiated the purchase of Marasa Machpelah. Beginning of the Parsha, it says, Vayu chaye sara, mea shana, ve'esrim shana, ve'sheva shanim, shnei chaye sara. And the lives, the lifetime of Sarah was 100 years, 20 years and seven years. These were the years of Sarah. But Tamas Sarah be Kiryas Arba, he Hebron, and she died in Kiryas Arba. Another name for Hebron, he Hebron, that is called Hebron. Beretz Kenan, Vayavo Avram, Li Spod, Le Sarah, Belief Kosa. And Avram Avinu came to eulogize Sarah, Belief Kosa, and to mourn for her, to cry over her. The Mephoshim tell us that the burial of Sarah by Avram Avinu. The purchase of land 
the first purchase of land in Eretz Yisrael by the Jewish people, claiming our land, our claim to the land of Israel is through this purchase of Marasa Machpelah in Hebron, was part of the test of the Akedah. It was part of the 10th test of the Akedah. How could that be? How could it be that the burial of Sarah is included? We've never heard that before. Never heard it before that the burial of Sarah and the test of Avram Avinu to bury Sarah, to find a burial place for her, and to go through the process of Aninus and Abelus and burying her, was part of the 10th test. How could that be? Let's look at Rashi together. I hope everyone has, when we learn together, our personal growth, Chabura, every Wednesday night. Like everyone to have a Chumash available with Rashi in Hebrew or English or both. And let's look at what Rashi tells us. You cannot learn Torah without Rashi. You can't play music without a guitar. You can't learn Torah without Rashi. Says Rashi. On the words, and look, note very carefully where Rashi comments. On the Divrei Hamaskil, on the beginning words of the Spod Lesarav Alif Kosa, to eulogize Sarah and to cry over her, not on the words of the beginning of the sentence, by Yamas, by Tamas Sarah Bekira Sarba. It doesn't go on the words that she died, it goes on the words that Avram came, the Spod Lesarav Alif Kosa. What does Rashi say? The death of Sarah is connected, is written right after the Akedas Yitzchak. Because through being told about the Akeda, that her, her son Yitzchak was about to be shechted, about to be sacrificed. Not actually sacrificed, but about to be sacrificed. He was almost sacrificed. The Kimat Shalon He was almost sacrificed. Parcha Nishmasa Vemeso. Her soul left her and she died. This is quoting the Tanhuma. Rashi quotes the Tanhuma and says that at the moment where she heard by an agent, by a Shaliach, that it was told to her that did you know that Yitzhak was almost shechted, almost sacrificed on her? Maria, he almost died. She got a shock. Ke'ilu, she got a heart attack. Parcha nishmasa, her soul left her. Why should these words of Rashi talking about Parcha nishmasa, Mesa, that she got a shock and she and she died? Um, she died. Why should they come on the words v'lispod l'sarav divkosa? On the words that Abraham came to eulogize Sarah and to cry over her. Why don't those words of her death come under the words in the Torah of Matama Sarah B'Kiriyat? She died. Why did she die? What Rashi would say. Why did she die? Because an agent told her that she, he was her son was about to be sacrificed and she died. It doesn't say that. Rashi comments on that Abraham Avinu came to bury Sarah and to cry over her. And there it says, there Rashi brings the Tanchuma. Who says that at that point she was got a shock and she died? So listen to the words of the Nesima Shalom. He tells us, and I'll paraphrase and then I'll go inside. These words tell us that these thoughts of that she died, she all she died because she heard of the Akedah were words that were thoughts. In the mind of Avram Avinu, placed there by the Eitzahar, placed there by the Sakhman. They had thoughts, he had those thoughts, that it could be that she died when it says that the life, life of Sarah was 100 years and 20 years and 7 years. And since it was Nismecha, was right next to the Akedah, he had a thought in his mind you know what? Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I gave up my wife in order to sacrifice. Yitzchak, on the Akeda, at the Akeda, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe it's because of the Akeda that she lost her life. She got a shock. 
So maybe I made a mistake. And the Satan, the Yitzhahara, put those words in his mind, that doubt, that thought, and could have forced him to regret the Akedah. This was part of the test of the Akedah. It was the completion of the test of the Akedah. That these are the words that entered his mind and could have caused him to regret the emotion of regret that I shouldn't have done it, done it, I shouldn't have done the Akedah. And he would have been Toya Allah Rishonim. He would have regretted the acts, the earlier acts. Had he done that and he regretted the Akedah, he would have lost his Av Hamon Goyim. He would have lost his standing as the father of the nation. Because these 10 tests formulate, fashion him as the father of Amuna of the nation. Had he failed, had he had a blemish in this last test of regretting the Akedah because he lost his wife, he would have lost everything and would not have been Avram Avinu. Listen to the incredible words of the Nesiva Shalom. He says that Sarah Imenu died at the right time. She died at 100 years, at 20 years, and 7 years of full life. It just so happens that it came next to the Akedah, but that was her time to die. And that was her set time to die. And she did not die because of the Akedah. That were thoughts that were placed in Avram's mind by the Satan. And Rashi is saying because of the proximity of the Akedah to her death, the Yitzhahara put this thought into his mind that it was because of the Akedah that she lost her life. And Avram Avinu resisted these second thoughts, these doubts, this self-doubt. And realize, no, by you, Chaye Sarah Mea Shana, the Eshim Shana, the Shabbat Shana, Shnei Chaya, she died. But Tamas Sarah Bekiras, and she died in Kiri Sarah. And then when he came, leave Kosa to eulogize her and to cry over her, he had a thought put in the mind of the, by the Satan, well, maybe since it's so close to the Akedah, maybe she died because of the Akedah. No, says, no, says Rashi. Because, by you, Chaye Sarah Mea Shana, the Eshim Shana, the Shabbat Shalom. Says the Siva Shalom. Unbelievable. He says, Shabihigiyah Zmana Yirvasu came time to die. It came die 127 years. It came time for time to die. Nizdamein Benada Shkita. It was at that very time, same time that she was supposed to die, that she fulfilled her 127 years. That that's when the Akeda, right before that, the Akeda happened. It wasn't that the Akeda caused her death. She was supposed to die 127. But that Akeda happened right before that, says the Nesiva Shalom. Nizdamein bena lishkita bekima chilo nishka parcha nishmasa. Bezos kedei, and this is for, shiyachshivu kol olam bechen Avram, that the whole world and Avram Avinu would think maybe sheparcha nishmasa machmas besor asakida. The whole world might think, and that's what we do think. We think that that's why she died. It's a mistake. It's a not an understanding of Rashi. Because Rashi doesn't talk about Batama Sara that she died because of the Akeda. He talks about Leif Kosa. He cried about her. He cried over her. And he cried and he wrestled with himself. And said, maybe she died because of the Akeda. No. She died because of Maya, the Esri Mishabashana. Why did that happen? This kedei leval bel as Avram Avinu sheyidad biyischarit alma asayu. The Satan wanted a test of Avram Avinu as part of the akeda, and said to him, "I want you to regret the akeda. You shouldn't have done it. You lost your wife because of it." V'yeh bebechinas toya al hamasim toyim shasa, and they, the the Satan wanted him to regret his good deeds that he did before on the akeda. He says, Nesiva Shalom, the truth is, the truth is she did not die in the middle of her years. She did not, she did not die prematurely because of the Besoira of the Akedah, of the hearing of the Akedah. At that moment, her years were fulfilled completely. 
And it just so happened that it was right before that was the Akedah. But that was her time to die. That's what the Torah says, 100 years and 20 years and 7 years. The Torah tells us that she lived 120 and 7 because that's the time that she was designated to die, fulfilled her life. The Kafal Oinroy, and then at the end of the Pasuk it says, These are the years of Sarah. Why does it say it again? These are the years of Sarah. To emphasize that these were the years of Sarah. To emphasize, these are elu. These are the years that she was given. And not one second more, as the Chazal tell us. When Sarah died, Rivka was born. Her life, her years of her life were exact. As every person's life is exact. There's no untimely death. The time that a God decides. And therefore, Rashi brings and says that the Akedah Yitzchak was right next to, was mentioned right before her death. The Satan wanted it to appear as if she died because of the Akedah. And he put those thoughts of possibility in the mind of Abraham Avinu, part of the test of the Akedah, to see whether the Akedah was a full emuna on the part of Abraham Avinu, or did he regret it? Abraham Avinu Ahmad Gam And Abraham Avinu withstood this test as well. As it says, Bayavo Abraham Lispor the Sarah Belief Kosa. When it says Belief Kosa, look in the text. He came to he came to eulogize her, Belief Kosa, to cry over her. Leaf kosa is a small chaf. A small chaf. Why? Tishoma says, why a small chaf in the Torah? The chaf is the era, and a small chaf. Shalobacha aleha ela me'at. She only cried, he only cried over her a little bit. But a small chaf. Leaf kosa. Keder sheboichim al As we cry over an elderly person who fulfills his years. We cry, and we certainly miss that person. But it's not a tragic cry. It's a cry of a celebration of their life. They fulfilled their life. 120 and 7 years. Not like we cry over a tragedy. A tragedy like when someone dies in half their years. He withstood this test. This was the time that she was meant to leave this world. By God's de- decree. Tzidu Kadin. Umasha parachanish masa. Einzem machmas besoras akeda. And the fact that she died was not because of the hearing of the akeda. An unbelievable turnaround. But now for who have understanding of this tanchuma, this medrash, that we all accept that she died because of the pirachanish. Not true. She did not die because of being told of the akeda. It was not a full crying, it was a partial crying, it was an ordinary crying, it was a course of life crying of a person who was elderly who passes away and goes on to the next world, their journey, but it wasn't a partial, a full crying. What is a full crying? I want to dedicate this to our Torah today, the memory of my late brother-in-law, David Macham Brown, Allah Shalom. He died 33 years ago in Baltimore, here in Baltimore on his way to Ner Israel Yeshiva on Purim night. He was killed in a car accident. And he too walked in the footsteps of Avram Avinu, the chesed of Avram Avinu. He died at the age of 20. We cried a full cry. Leave Kosa with the big chaf. True, it was his time to leave this world as well. But he died prematurely for our purposes, in our eyes. He was a bal chesed. He took boys around the Yeshiva. Introduced them to yeshiva. And when he was in eighth grade in Memphis, Tennessee, he gave his pair of tzitzis to a young boy who came from out of town. That, that boy is now a big rabbi, a big Kirov rabbi in New York City. 
and he remembers that time and he called me. He spoke about it. And he remembers that time where someone gave his own tzitzis to me, this young, this rabbi. He was a Balchasa. He walked in the footsteps of our Mavinu. And his memory should be a blessing and it should be a good baiter for all of us. So the Amuna of the Akedah of this last test, part of the Akedah was this test of burying sorrow. And therefore, we say in Marib every night, the Haser Satan Milfaninu, should, God should remove the Satan from before us, Umeacharenu from after us. Says the Siva Shalom, Milfaninu, God should remove the Satan from before us, Milfaninu, before we do the sin. He tries to entice us to do an act and says, Come here, look at this. The Yetzirah is known as the Melech Zakin Uksil. In Koheles, King Solomon calls him the king who is old and foolish. Why? Why is Zakin Uksil? Because he says, this you have to see. Taste this. Taste this cheeseburger. Do this. This is new. You've never had this before. Everything he says is new. It's novel. It's innovative. It's gewaldic. Have this. Do this. Distract yourself. Do this. This is new. That's why he's called the Melech Zaki Nuxil, the old and foolish king, because everything he has to show us and distract us with is old. We've had it before. We've seen it before. We've done it before. But he tries to trick us with his imagination. Dimion, the Koach Dimion, and says, this, oh, this is new. Try this. That's what he's called, the old and foolish king. Melech Zaki Nuxil. He tries to convince us before we do something that try this. And then we say, the Haser Satan Milfanid Umea Kharino. And after we resist, and after we don't eat the cheeseburger, he says, after the fact, after we resisted, we won the test, and we withstood the test, he says, You should have had that cheeseburger. Man, was that a good cheeseburger? Don't you regret it? Mm. Wow, was that good? You should have done it. Before we act, and after we act, he causes us to regret it. This is what the Satan tried to do with Abraham Avinu. Before he acted, he said, yeah, he's not going to do it. I test you. And after he acted, and after he withstood the test of the Akedah, he said, don't you regret it? You lost your wife. He didn't lose his wife because of the Akedah. Sarah died because it was the right time that Hashem decreed. But he made it appear as if, since it was right next to it, he tried to put thoughts in his mind that you should regret your actions. We have to maintain our amuna before we do an action and after we do an action. And this is a personal growth chabura, a personal growth group. We have to learn and call from the Torah an idea of how we can grow personally. How can we grow personally from this idea of the doubts sown in our minds about our actions that we take? These doubts that are in our mind are the eight Sahara. They are negative thoughts. They are second thoughts. They are thoughts of regret. Maybe I should have done that. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't. I should have partaken of that thing. Yeah, I should have done that. We have to try to work on our Amuna that when we do an action and we do an act, don't look back. You did it. You did a good act. Don't regret it. Don't have doubts. Don't have second thoughts. This comes from self-confidence. I chose to do something, which I hope is the right thing to do, and therefore I do not regret it. Feel shalim, and as I learned as a lawyer, when I would go to court and have a trial in criminal defense court, and I came out of court and I was talking to the lawyers in the lawyer's room, I said, oh, I shouldn't have asked that question. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. Why did I say that? They said, you're a young lawyer. I want to teach you a very important lesson. When you leave court, don't look back. Don't analyze what I should have said, what I could have said, what I would have said. Why did I say that? Go on to the next case. Don't regret because you're going to beat yourself up. That's the work of self-doubt. When a person has confidence that I thought it through, I made a good decision. That's if you thought it through. If you think it through and make a good decision, then don't doubt it. Don't allow the negative thoughts to take you over. Why? What you did 
was a matter of your neshama. Second thoughts come from here, from your mind. Your neshama is bigger than your mind. Your neshama is the real you. The mind is a machine. The mind is a computer. The real essence of self is the choosing place, the neshama, the soul. You chose to do good. The machine, the memory, the mind starts doubting and starts calculating. Maybe you shouldn't. Why did you do that? Maybe you should have done something better. That's the machine, which is a glitch in the machine trying to tell the neshama, regret it. So the essence of self is neshama. When you have confidence, your neshama comes from God, from Hashem. And you think it through, and you pause, and you think through, and you make a good decision. Don't let the mind freak you out or cause doubts to enter your mind. That's a personal growth idea that we can learn from Avram Avinu in the Akeda. His neshama did the Akeda. His mind, this Nets coming from the Yetzirah, put in his mind a glitch. Oh, maybe you shouldn't have. You lost your wife. You thought about it? No. Lispod the Sarah Livkosa. I'm going to bury Sarah. And this Akeda connection is not because of the Akeda. It's because she died at the right time. And I have a Muna and Hashem that that is the right time that she died. She fulfilled her life mission and she died. Anybody who dies fulfills their life mission, whether they're young or old. We feel that the person died earlier or earlier than a point in time. But we have to understand that Hashem runs the world. He runs Tia Samesi. He runs rain. He runs childbirth. Those three keys are totally in the hands of Hashem, the Gemara and Titus. And therefore, we have to have a Muna that Hashem runs the world. Clearly, in the life of, in the times of COVID-19 that we're experiencing right now, the terrible experiences that we're experiencing right now, it's in the hands of Hashem. We have an opportunity to build our amuna, to develop our amuna, our strength and our faith in Hashem. Let's move on now to a second concept that is connected to this idea that Sarah was buried. Where was she buried? In Marasa Machpila. What does it mean, Maras HaMachpela? The double cave. Says my Rebbe Rav Moshe Shapira Zatzal. The double cave means people who lie there, the four couples who lie there, Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, Avram and Sarah, Yitzhak and Rivka, Yaakov and Leah. Those four couples lived doubly. They lived their life properly in, the world, in this world. And they redoubled it in the world to come. The double cave. Why? It's a double cave. Because they lived a double repeated life. Once in this world, and they repeated and lived that life completely with truth in the world to come. This world is called Olam Hazen. The world to come is called Olam Haba. That doesn't make sense. Let's think about it. Olam Hazen, this world, What's the opposite of this world? This world and that world. So Olam Hazeh is this world. We should say, and the next world is called Olam Hahu. Olam Hazeh, this world, and that world. Olam Hahu, this world, and that world. It doesn't say that. There are no two worlds. Olam Hazeh, this world, and that world. And we cash in our points, our good brownie points, and we say, oh, I'll take a Cadillac, and a mansion, and a Lexus, and a Tesla, and a steak every night. It'll cash in our points in that world, this world. And then we go to the prize booth. And we cash in our tickets in that world. This world, we do our work, our avoda. And next world, that world, we cash in our tickets. That's not what it says. Olam hazeh, says the al -Shik. Olam hazeh gives rise to olam haba mitoch olam hazeh. The next world, olam haba mitoch. This next world comes out of this world, which means the next world is a replay of this world. There's no other world. It is this world. It is the efforts we put in this world. We create a spiritual energy, a spiritual forceful field. That's what it means when we create a malach, when we do a mitzvah. We create an angel. What does that mean? We create a spiritual energy that we're going to live in in the world to come. That that spiritual energy we create in this world, that's the next world. The next world is in this world. And the avos, Avram and Yitzchak, Yitz, Abram and Sarah, Yitzchak and Rivka, Ra, uh, Yaakov and Leah lived in this world and are reliving their next world, Machpelah, doubled. 
This world pa'amayim, says Rabbi Shem. Olam azeh pa'amayim. This world doubled. This world a second time. Because they lived truthfully. And emesdik. And chesedik. With Abraham Avinu's midas chesed. And Yitzchak midas din. And Yaakov midas emes. They lived those midas in this world. And they're living those midas in the world to come forever. They're repeating them. But the only reward that we get in the world to come is what we earned in this world. This world leads to the next world. The next world comes out of this world. Whatever we do in this world is repeated in the next world. There's no other world. There's no Ferris wheels. There's no fishing creek. We can retire and live in a fishing creek. There's no other world. It's this world repeated in a deeper level. Olam haba, mitoch olam hazeh. What was the life of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov? When we come to Davin, Shachos, Mincha, and Marit, we don't Davin, says Ramesha, we do not Davin the three Amidos, the same Davin. The words are the same. The Amida, the 19 Brachos of the Shmona Esrei, Shachos, Mincha, and Marit are all the same. Shachos, Mincha, and the same words, three times. But there are three completely different philos. Because they brought to the world Eloke Avraham, Eloke Yitzchak, Eloke Yaakov. In the Amida, we say the God of Avraham, the God of Yitzchak, and the God of, of, of Yaakov. Why does it say Eloke Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, the God of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov? Because each one is a separate individual. Each one brought down a different hashgacha, a different concept of relationship with Hashem. Avraham, Abinu, Davin, Shachris. Shachris prayer is a Shachris of the dawn. It's a prayer of chesed. Abraham Avinu realized that Hashem is a Baal Chesed. He gave the world a renewal. That's an act of Chesed on the part of Hashem. And therefore, he emulated God's actions by bringing Chesed to the world. That's why he brought the Midah of Chesed to the world, because he saw that Hashem was the Baal Chesed, the master of Chesed. And therefore, Shachwis, the dawn, the morning of experiencing the blossoming of the dawn and the rising of the dawn and the birds chirping and the fresh air, and the fog lifting. It's a renewal of the world. It's an act of chesed on the part of Hashem. So we daven shachris, we're davening a sense of renewal, of rejuvenation, of joy, of chesed of Hashem. That's our shachris. Our shachris is joyous celebration of the renewal of the world. That's the, the tenor. That's the ethos. That's the machshava of the tefillah that we daven shachris. is the tefillah of the dawn. Of Chesed. Mincha was created by Yitzchak. He was the first person to have Mincha. Mincha is the end of the day. At the end of a project, a person has to report back to his boss. Finished, boss. Done. Thank you. When a soldier goes out to battle, he comes back at the end of the day and reports back to a general. Mission accomplished, sir. At the end of the day, which means in the time of din, when the sun is setting, the end of the day, a person reports back to God and says, God, this is what I did with my day. You gave me 12 waking hours. Here's what I did with my day. That's called accountability. That's called din. That's called justice. I must report back to God. And Yitzchak was the Midas Adin. He died on the Akedah. Ki'ilu. Kimat Yishchak. He almost died. And according to some Meforshim, the Gemara says at Menachos that when the two, when the Tanaim were walking on the Harabais, they saw the place of the Migdash. They saw the place of the Akedah. How do they know? They said, Efro shel Yitzchak munachim lefana. The ashes of Yitzchak are lying before me. What ashes? He wasn't shechted. He wasn't sacrificed. He didn't die. What do you mean that the Efro, the ashes of Yitzchak are lying right there? How could that be? Because on a certain level, on a level of mashava, level of intention, Abraham Avinu wanted to shecht him, and Yitzhak wanted to be shecht him. And therefore, on that spiritual level of Mahshava, they wanted to have the ashes there, and therefore Hashem put the ashes there. Kilu, That was the notification to the Tanayim, as where was the place of the Akedah. They saw the ashes. Symbolically, spiritually, they saw the ashes lying there. So this is the afternoon davening. The tenor, the ethos of our afternoon davening, Mincha, is... Let me reflect on my day. What did I do today? What did I accomplish in my waking hours today? How did I serve God today? I'm reporting back. It's a 
Tefillah is an amida of din, of justice, of accountability, of responsibility, of reporting back to the boss, to Kibyachol, the master of the universe, and saying, this is what I did with my day. That's a different tenor than Shach. Shach was just, ah, the days are in front of me. New day. I thank you, Hashem, out of Chesed. And now it comes to Mincha. We say, Hashem, this is my responsibility. This is din. This is justice. And I'm going to report back to you in as is my responsibility to report back to you as what I did with the life you gave me today. That's me to Mariv, the evening service, was founded by Yaakov Vid. He encountered a place, he was running away from, uh, he left the uh, yeshiva of Shem and after that, learning there for 14 years, he came to the place of the Migdash, Vayifga, and the word Pegia means tefillah. Vayifga b'makom. He encountered the place with tefillah and he davened Mariv. Yaakov's midah is MS, truth. When we see the sun set and it's dark outside, that's a time where everything is taken away from us. We cannot see. Without artificial light, we'll be pitch black. Until 120 years ago, we didn't have electricity, just lanterns. Flames. We ended up. We end up with choshech. Choshech is the idea of chasachta. When Hashem said to Avraham Avinu, "I give you tribute for having passed the akeda, the test of the akeda." He lost chasachta as bircha yichidecha. Do not hold back your son, your only son. Chasachta, the root word of chasachta, hold back, is choshech. Says. Targumunculus, chasachta means mana'ata. You held back. You did not hold back Yitzchak from me. Choshech is a holding back of light. Darkness is the withdrawing of light. In darkness, we become existentially alone. We're afraid of dark. When we sit at home at night, hear a creek. We don't worry about those creeks during the day. What was that creek? What was that sound? What was going on out there? Thunder, lightning. Much more poignant, much more scary at nighttime than it is during the day. Because at nighttime, the light, clarity is taken away from us. We're alone and we feel existentially vulnerable. And that's the time of a tefillah of MS. Because actually, in MS, Arayim, in truth, we are alone. We are alone in our relationship with God. But we're not alone and as lonely, we're alone with God. And our avoda, as was Yaakov Avinu, who established Mariv, is emunascha balelos, faith in the darkness, faith at nighttime. The hagid baboker chazdecha to say in the morning the chesed of Hashem. That's Abraham Avinu. The hagid baboker chazdecha the emunascha balelos, and to declare your emuna, emuna in you, faith in you, God. Even though I'm alone, I feel your existential closeness. I'm existentially alone, but I'm not alone. I'm alone with you. That's a tefillah of emes, a tefillah of emuna. So the morning tefillah of Amida, the tenor is dawn, a new day, shachris, chesed. The tenor of mincha is din, reporting back to God. The tenor of Amida that we have in mind as we approach Amida is I, I feel that I am existentially alone. And when I'm existentially alone in Mariv, I feel that closest to God. I may feel far from God. God is transcendent. He feel, I feel far as he tests me in my aloneness. At the same time, I feel close because I know that he is with me. That's the give and take relationship. That's the distance and closest relationship we have with Hashem. That's why, according to some of the Meforshim, that's why we shuckle when we dove it. We do this. This is close, this is far. This is Ahava, this is Yirva. So we shuckle because we represent the idea of I feel close to you, God. I feel far from you, God. I feel close to you, God. I feel far from you, God. I feel I feel Ahava, love to you, Hashem. I'm close to you. I feel in awe of you, God. Ahava, Yira. Ahava, Yira. Ahava, Yira. Everything we do has meaning. In the minute of shuckling. So here we have 
Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov buried in Marasa Machpelah in this double cave where they lived their lives of Shachris, Chesed, Mincha, Din, and Mariv, Emes. And they are reliving that life in the Olam Haba, a double cave, a double life, a life of Chesed, Din, and Emes in this world. And they're going to repeat that world, going to repeat that Chesed, that Din, and that Emes in the world to come forever. That's what a double cave means. To repeat your life in the next world, the chesed you did in this world will be lived for chesed forever. The din, the justice, the kindness, and the righteousness you did in this world is going to be repeated forever. The MS, the truth that you've learned Torah, and the good MS choices, good choices you made in this world, are going to be relived forever in a maras ha in a double repeat, a double cave in the maras ha where are buried Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. The Gemara Brachos says an astounding thing. There's a machlekes in the Gemara Brachos. Dav Chavval on the base, page 26b, who says, Rabbi Yossi Barab Hanina says, the tefilos of the Avos, these tefilos we just mentioned, Shachas Min Chamarav, were established by the, the Avos, tefilos, tefilos, Avnas, Avos, Tiknu. Tefilos, Avos, Tiknu. The tefilos of Shachas, the Amida of Shachris, Mincha and Marav, were established by the Avos, as we just established. It says Rabbi Yeshua, who argues, and says, no. Tfilos can they get Korbanos Tiknu. The Tfilos of Shachris, Mincha and Marav, were established, can they get the Korbanos, the sacrifices of the Shachris, Shach sacrifice, the Mincha sacrifice, and the evening burning of the Evari, the Mariv, that's the reason why we have we daven. So machlokes in the Gemara, an argument in the Gemara. Why do we daven? Do we daven because of the avos? Or we daven because of of the base of Mikdash and the korbanos of the base of Mikdash. The Rambam brings both in Hilchos Tfila. The Rambam says we daven for both reasons. We learn from here. Therefore, there's an aspect of an avos type davening, and there's an uh, an aspect of a Korban type davening. There are two aspects to tefillah. One aspect, says Rabbi Moshe, is the avos tiknu, that the avos establish shachras min chamarad, chesed, din, and emes. And there's a second dimension of tefillah, which is the tefillah of the Besavidash. Says Rabbi Nabachia, the following. Rabbi Nabachia says, on this parsha, in this parsha of Vayu Chayesara, Meashani, Meashana, Veashim Shana, Veashavashani, Shnei Chayesara. He says the following. The tefillos are prayers, olos umiskavlos. They go up and they're accepted. Derech marasa machpila. Unbelievable. The Ben Abachia says our prayers go through Hebron. They go through the marasa machpila. They go through the avos. Avos tiknu. They established the Abra, the shachas min chamar. That through Hebron, Hebron means Chibur, Hebron, Chaber, Chaber, to be a friend, to connect with, Chibur to connect with. Says Rabbi the connection of our Neshamos are connected to the Kisya Kavod through Marasa Machpila. The Shoresh of our Neshamos is connected to the Kisya Kavod. Our Neshamos are connected to the Kisya Kavod, the throne of glory. And this is a gateway to heaven. Where is that gateway to heaven? Says Rabbi Bahia. Marasa Machpila. Opposite the Marasa Machpila in Shemaim in heaven, there is an opposite gateway to the throne of glory through the Marasa Machpila. Says the Megala Amukos the following words. A Pesach Harishon Sheneshama Holeches Beshaz Yitzias Haneshama. The first gateway. That the neshama goes through when it leaves this world. He marasa machpila. The first gateway, the neshama leaves the body and goes on its journey toward the next world. It goes through first, the first gateway, marasa machpila. Shesham nikbar haavos vaimos, because there are buried the avos and the imaus. There are two gateways to the kesei akavod. One is. Avos, Marasa Machpelah, and one is the Beis HaMikdash. 
two gateways of prayer. How do you understand this? We say in our davening, in, in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, and we say it also on a, on a tainus, on a fast day. Avinu malkinu chatanu lefanecha. We say, Avinu, my father, our father, malkinu, our king. This Avinu Malkinu, says Rabbi Moshe, is an expression of this Machlekes in the Gemara of that the Avos establish the Tfilos, the prayers, or were they establish Kneged, the sacrifices of Shachras, Mincha, and Maruf in the Mesa Mikdash. Avinu is one aspect of prayer, and Malkinu is another aspect of prayer. What are these two aspects of prayer? The Avos, Avram, Sarah, Imahos, Avram, and Sarah, Yitzchak, and Rivka, Yaakov, Rachel, and Leah, they were known as the Yesharim, the straight ones. And the Ramban calls the Sefer Breshis, Sefer Hayashar. It's known as the Sefer Hayashar. The first paragraph of the Shema is Magain Avraham. The first paragraph of the Amida, we say, Baruch Atah Hashem Abraham, the king, it's like Yaakov. We ended off with Baruch Hashem, Magin Avraham. First bracha is the bracha of the Av Avraham, Avraham Avinu. The second bracha, Mechayi Hamesim, that's Yitzchak Avinu. He was Mechayi Mesim. He got up after the Akedah, after he died on the altar, he began to live. After he Ki'ilu, he almost died on the Akedah. He got off the Mizbeach and he married Rivka and he had children and he had us, Yaakov and the, the Shvatim. And the great great grandchildren of the Shvatim, you and I. So after he died, after Tchiasamisin, after he died, after the Akedah where he's supposed to die, and he didn't die, that's the bracha of Yitzchak, the Midas Hadin. And Akhila Kadosh, the awe inspiring God, that's the bracha of Yaakov Avinu. So Avinu, when we say that the, the Amida was established by the Avos, is Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Magin Avram, Mechai Mesi, Makela Kadosh. Because we, in our first three blessings of the Amida, we are saying we want to be like the Avos. We want to be like Avram, Magin Avram. We want to be like Yitzchak, Mechai Mesi, Midas Adin. We want to be like Yaakov, Akela Kadosh. We establish our Avoda. We are beginning Avoda, our beginning of Tfila through Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. And that's why that tefillah, the beginning of the tefillah, Alabida goes through Marasa Machpila, Kunda Rabbein Bachya, and Megala Mukos. In this beginning of the Gita, we do not ask for anything. We just say, I want to be like Avram, like Sarah, like Yitzchak, Rivka, like Yaakov, Rachel, and Leah. We just want to be like you. It's total shabach to be v'halachta v'drachav, to walk in your ways. To be like Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov. To be connected to God by being yashar, by being straight. How? By acting like the avos, Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov. And by acting v'halachta v'drachav, walking in the midos of Hashem. Kaviyako. The question is, are we allowed to pray? What a chutzpah is for us to pray. To, to pray, to daven, is a chutzpah because we're suggesting that we know better than God. God, you decided this. I want you to change your mind and give a refuge labor to somebody else. I want you to give me a refuge labor. I want the better parnasa. I want my kids to be married. Since Hashem decided no until now, he said no. Is it not a chutzpah on my part to say, God, master of the universe who knows everything, knows the best for me. I think you should change your mind. I think you made a mistake. Is that not a chutzpah on our part to daven? The act of davening is a chutzpah. That I want you to give me something that you didn't want to give me, or you until now have not given me. I want to change God's mind. Is that not a chutzpah? Says Rabbi Moshe Shapira Zatzal. It's not a chutzpah. When we daven to be like Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, we deserve these things. We deserve the tefillah. We deserve our, our tefillahs because we are connected. We're allowed to daven because our Philos, the beginning of the Philos of Amida, is we want to be like you, God. We want to be like Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, to be aligned with the Adam, the Tzuras Adam, the greatness that man was supposed to be. 
And when we do that, then we are entitled to pray. It's not a chutzpah to pray, because that's the tzura sa'adam, the form of man, the ennobled man that God intended Adam Arishon to be. And Adam Arishon and Achava are also buried in Ras Machpila. They're also called Avos in a certain place in the Mephorshim. Avram, Adam, and Chava are also called Avos, forefathers. Ain Kol Chai, the mother of all life. So when we daven in the first three brachas of Shmon Esrei, of Shachas Min Chamarav, we want to say, Magin Avraham, Mechaya Misim, Akela Kadosh, we're saying, I want to be Yashar like the Avos. And when I strive to be Yashar like Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah, then I deserve the blessings that I'm asking for. I am allowed to pray because I am emulating the Avos, emulating Yashrus, emulating the Yash Sefer Yats, a Yashar, and therefore I am deserving of the Makor, to connect with the Makor, the source of all life, because that's the Tzur that Hashem intended for us to be. That's our place in this world is to strive to be like Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Rachel, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Aleya. That's the Sefer Hayasha, Sefer Hayasha of Rashis. Therefore, we're not asking God for anything. We're asking God to be like Him. We're asking to be close to Hashem. We're allowed to dive to be close to Hashem. And that goes through the Marasa Machpila because buried there are Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Leah. And therefore, we want to, our prayers go through Marasa Machpila in the first three brachos of the Shmon Esri, of the Amida, and that's the idea of Avinu. The Avinu of Malkinu, Avinu Malkinu, is the Avinu is going through the Shar of the Kisya Kavo, the gate with the Kisya Kavo, the throne of glory, is connected through the Masa Machpila. Those who live a life of Yashar, we want to emulate that Yashus, and we want to act like them to connect with God, and therefore we're allowed to pray because we want to be like them. We're asking for nothing, just to emulate the others, to be close to God, to emulate Hashem's Midos, which were expressed by Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah, and therefore we want to be, of course, Rachel was not buried there, we want to be like the Avos and the Imahos. So the essence of this type of Tefillah, Avinu, is to be Yasha. This is how we are intended to be. We are intended to be keli, vessels, to receive Hashem's blessing. Therefore, it can't be a chutzpah. We are intended to be like Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Therefore, I'm allowed to daven. I'm not, in the first three brachas, asking to change God's mind. I'm asking to be as best I could be. That is allowing me to be close to God. And therefore, all our needs are given to us by virtue of our being like Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Sarah, Rivka, and Leah, and as well too by Rachel. And that's the idea of Lis Ane Galashem. We were given this world to enjoy this world, to be delight in God. He wants to give us. How? If we act like Avram and Yitzhak and Yaakov, we act like Adam Arishon before he sinned, and, and Chava before she sinned, then we by right receive. The blessings just flow into us. It's not a question of we ask for things. We get them automatically. To delight in God because we act like God. The purpose of life is to act like Hashem. To be as God-like as possible. And the examples of godliness in this world are Avram, Sarah, Yitzchak, Rivka, Yaakov, Leah, and of course Rachel. The second dimension of prayer <clears throat> goes to the base of Mikdash. The Koisel. The Wailing Wall, the Western Wall, the only, the closest wall. It's not the only wall. It's not true. All four walls of the Second Temple are extant. They are existing. South Wall, Huldah's Gate, the Eastern Wall, the Northern Wall, and the Western Wall. Just the Western Wall is the closest to the base of English. It's not the only wall remaining. It's the closest wall. It's 90 meters away from the Makam Amigdash. When we say Avinu Malkenu, the Malkinu dimension, serving God as our king, that goes through the Beis Hamikdash. That goes through the idea in the Gemara of Keneged Korbanos Tiknu, that the, the Tfilos, 
were established connected the Shachos, Mincha, Mara Korbanos, which were given in the Beis HaMikdash. This is the idea of what classical tefillah means. Tefillah means bakasha. The word tefillah really means psil. The word, root word of tefillah is psil. Psil means a wick. I want to be intertwined with God. I want to be aligned with God. Tefillah is niftalti. Niftalti. Naftali. Psil. I want to be intertwined. I want to be connected with God. But when I'm connected with God, I ask of, of him and I make bakashas. The 13 middle brachas of the Shemona Esrei are bakashas, requests of God. Those requests go through the Beis Amigdash. Those go connected the korbanos. I want to get close to God through the korbanos. These are requests. These requests need to be deserved. The first three brachas don't need to be deserved per se. We need to be like Hashem, and those brachas come automatically. That's why we don't ask for anything in the first three brachas. But in the middle of 13 brachos, we ask for things. We ask for das. We ask for strength. We ask for refua. We ask for parnasa. We ask for a return to Jerusalem. We ask for Mashiach. We ask Hashem to answer our tefillos. We ask for things. There, God is king. When you have a king, we're in Eved Hashem. You have to serve God. We have to deserve these blessings. Wisdom, health, parnasa. This goes through the Beis Amikdash. And we ask these things. We don't ask them for ourselves. I want to have money. I want to have money and I want to have health in order to serve you. That's called Shulchan Gavoa. I pray for the Shulchan Gavoa for your honor, Hashem, not for myself. It's a very hard level to get to because usually we have them for our own health and our family's health and our friend's health and our community health and our parnasa. But a higher level of tefillah is called I daven for these things for the purpose of Shulchan Gavoa that I shall aspire to a higher table. Your table, Hashem. I want to use these things of health and parnasa to serve you, to build institutions for you, Hashem. And this is the words, ki beisi beis tfila. My house, the house of the beis amidash, is a beis tfila. That is the house of God. That's the beis amidash. That's Malkinu. So there are two kisai hakavod. There are two dimensions of the key. There's one key, see, covered, but there are two dimensions to it. The dimension of Avinu goes through Maras Machpila, being Yashar like the others. The dimension of Malkinu goes through the Beis Amidash. And therefore, we are, we are davening two dimensions of Fila. Dimensions of Fila of Avinu and of Malkinu. And therefore, this perhaps... As our in our personal growth, Chavura can give us a greater understanding of what tefillah is. The two dimensions of personal growth that we can learn from this machlokas in the Gemara is that we have God as our Avinu, our Father, and our Father means I want to be like my Father. I want to be close to Hashem because I want to act like Him. Who are His representatives in this world? I want to act like Avram, the Chesed of Avram, the responsibility and accountability of Yitzchak, and the MS, the justice and the Torah of Yaakov Avinu, living the Torah. When we, this week, our job this week is to emulate Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, to learn Chai Esara, to experience Chai Esara, not just to learn Torah, but to live the Torah. Our job is to write down, how and can I be like Avram Avinu this week? How can I do an act of chesed this week? Yitzchak, how can I be like Yitzchak and be responsible this week, an act of responsibility. How can I be a person of faith like Yaakov Vinu, have a Buna this week? Apply the Torah to ourselves. Make it count, make it real, make it palpable. Make it real to ourselves by bringing into ourselves the lives of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov and living their midos. That's the Avos Tiknu, that the Avos established the first three brachos. And then when we dive in, the middle 13, 13 brachos, the bakashos, the requests in tefillah. Let's ask for them and say, God, I want to have them in order to serve you better. I don't want them for my own purposes. I want them to serve you on a higher level. So in that way, we can draw from the message in this personal growth chabur, growth chabur of how we can grow from emulating Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov as, as children of Hashem, Bani Matem Lashem Amokechem, the children of Hashem, that is Aravinu, that's Maras Machpila. And we can also grow as 
of of the Hashem, servants of God. I want to deserve these blessings. How do I deserve them? I want to ask for them. I want health so I can serve you. I want to survive COVID because I want to serve you and do your bidding. I want to have parnasa so I can serve you. Use parnasa for tuition and for for good things in the community and stock up. And that way we could grow as an Ebed Hashem, as Hashem is Malkinu, and grow as a child of Hashem, Avinu. And that way we can sing together as we sing on Rosh Hashanah. Perhaps we can sing and end with this. Let's sing Avinu Malkinu by saying, what is a song? What does song mean? Why do we sing Zmiros? A song means it's the end of a, of a unit. We sing Zmiros on Shabbos because at the end of the week, we completed the unit and we want to sing. Sheer means a circle. A sheer in the Gemara means a circle. A song means a circle. And we want to sing this idea of Avinu Malkinu. And that way, perhaps we can bring it home to us and sing that song to us towards Shabbos and after Shabbos of trying to serve God as a children of Hashem, Avinu, and as Malkinu, as servants of Hashem. Avinu Malkinu. Chaneinu vaneinu, avinu malkinu, chaneinu vaneinu, kien banu masim. Asei manu, tzedaka vachesed, asei manu, tzedaka vachesed, vehoshienu. Hope to see you next week, Wednesday night, 8.30, or next Kavura, Mirat Sashem. Thanks for joining us.